So I've had a few people ask me about the quiz banks on ATI um, and how to use them. So I'm going to do a quick demonstration and show you how to access them and then also how to um, basically get the questions um, or search for the questions that you're going to need um, to study for for each exam and then how to compile a um, exam uh, to test yourself on. So first thing you're going to do is you're going to log into your um, your account. Okay. So I'm logged into ATI. And the first thing you want to do is you want to click on my, my ATI. Click on test. Go to quiz bank. and then select dynamic quizzes and then quizzes and assignments. First thing you want to do, um, say you've got uh, uh, client safety is one of the chapters on the exam. And, you know, I want to go over this real quick with you before we go into the me showing you how to search. All of these exams that are given um, throughout the program, um, ATI writes the questions for these exams. Um, your instructors, they do not write these questions. Um, all they do is select from a bank. So by using this quiz bank and this learning system, I can guarantee you um, searching keyword or, or by chapter, it is going to give you the same exact questions um, or some that are going to be very similar to the ones on your exam. Um, I've been doing this from the start of day one and it is why I have been successful on passing these ATI exams. And I will also tell you that I have seen um, questions within this, this um, practice quiz bank here um, that have appeared word for word on these exams. So this is very important um, to use this feature with an ATI. So um, one of the things that we are studying um, from the ATI book was uh, client safety, which would be on the exam for um, my cohort tomorrow. So I'm going to type in client safety. Now you can see it searched through all subjects um, you know, it shows you the difficulty here. Everything has been unanswered. Um, uh, you've got med surge, leadership, mental health, pharmacology, fundamentals. And I'm going to tell you one thing that I've noticed too. It doesn't matter in, you know, what subject this is in. You know, uh, later on, you might be in fundamentals right now or you might be in pharmacology. But I can assure you some of these questions that will be on your exams within fundamentals and pharmacology are going to be from uh, maybe adult medical surgical or it could be from psych, I mean, leadership, whatever. Uh, it's just one whole quiz bank um, of questions that they pick from. So always allow every question. Um, it shows here that you've got 126 questions total that have that keyword of client safety in it. So I'm going to hit create quiz with these filters. Um, you've got three choices. You've got an actual test um, that gives you the answers and explanation after the quiz. Um, you've got an adaptive um, answers and explanations available after the quiz. It includes uh, performance metrics, um, uh, things like that. I usually just do study. That way it gives me the answers and explanations or rationales during the exam so I can read through them. So now that you see I've selected study, um, all questions have been selected. I'm going to do the difficulty, di difficulty level of all. Um, you know, you, I just I do them all. I mean, some people say do all the hard ones. You know, don't do the easy or the moderate, but just do them all. Just create a quiz for all of them. Um, make sure you select the total. The max number is 126, so I'm going to change this to 126. Um, I don't time myself on these quizzes because I'm studying, so I'm going to keep it um, untimed. And then I'm going to name this quiz Client Safety. And hit Start Quiz. 
and then you've got your first question. A nurse is reviewing the correct use of a fire extinguisher, extinguisher with a client. Which of the following actions should the nurse direct uh, the client to make first? Um, aim the hose at the base of the fire. Squeeze the handle of the extinguisher. Remove the safety fin from the extinguisher and then sweep the hose from side to side. Now, you're not going to be able to use this fire extinguisher unless you squeeze or remove the safety pin from the extinguisher, so we're going to go with that answer. And you can hit show explanation, and of course it gives you the rationale to why it was right, um, and then also the incorrect answers. But I want you to always read the incorrect answers because as you can see, evidence-based practice indicates aiming the hose of the fire extinguisher is the second step. Um, squeezing the handle is the third step. Um, uh, sweeping the hose from side to side is the fourth step. So while you're taking these exams and it's giving you the rationales, you can actually take notes and um, write all of this down. So, um, you know, like I said, once you get done with that or you answer that question, you read that rationale, you're going to hit, uh, hit next down here at the bottom. Okay, so for the second one here, we have a nurse is caring for an older adult client who has dementia. The client becomes agitated and confused at night and wanders into the hallway. Which of the following actions should the nurse take? So the one thing that I do when I'm looking at these questions, I like ruling out some of them. Um, one thing about ATI is they every question that they give you, um, the answer is always going to be, about what is going to keep the client the safest, um, what is, is, is going to protect your client. So you always want to keep that in the back of your mind when you're answering these questions is that ATI only wants what's best for your patient. So um, right now I'm looking at D, it stuck out to me. Turn out the lights in the client's room at night. Number one, we know that this is an adult, older adult. Um, this older adult has dementia. Um, the client becomes agitated, the client is confused at night, the client likes to get up and wander the hallways. By turning out that patient's light, um, you are, you're causing a risk of harm for that patient. So automatically I'm throwing that out. Um, some people may be thinking, well, that could help the, the patient sleep. You're right, but to me, thinking critically, I'm thinking harm. So I'm going to throw that out personally. Um, C, provide continuous orientation to the client. Um, this, this patient has dementia. Um, I mean, you could provide continuous orientation to the client since the client does have dementia, um, but it doesn't tell us how bad the dementia is. So I'm not going to throw it out, but I'm, I'm not going to say that that's correct just yet. Um, restrain the client during the nighttime hours. Okay, so this is a big no-no. Um, unless you have a um, an order to you know to restrain that patient, um, that you cannot do this. <laughs> um, that's false imprisonment. You cannot do that. So I don't see anything about an order on here. Um, I also don't see that the patient is in a hospital, so the nurse could be caring for this older adult client at home. I don't know yet. Um, but I'm, I'm not going to say restrain because I just don't believe, I think that's like last resort for anything is to restrain another human being. So I'm going to throw B out and I've thrown D out. A, place the client's mattress on the floor. That is a new one for me. Um, but between these two, I feel like putting the client's mattress on the floor could possibly be the safest bet. Um, I could provide continuous orient, you know, orientation to that patient, but you know, is that patient going to remember remember you know what I have said? It's just it it falls along some of the other questions that ATI has given us in the past, which are um, you know what would you do if you've got a confused client in the room that keeps getting up out of the bed? Um, would you uh, keep reminding the patient not to get out of the bed or would you uh, tell your assistive personnel to sit in the room with the patient to make sure 
that that patient doesn't get out of bed. Well, you're going to send that assistive personnel in there to sit with the patient to make sure that that patient doesn't get out of the bed. Um, that's going to prevent harm coming to that patient. So I'm going to go with place the client's mattress on the floor, even though it sounds absolutely insane. But a lot of ATI's questions are insane, and I have learned this. So let's say place the client's mattress on the floor, final answer. And I am correct. So let's see why. To ensure the client's safety and prevent falls related to nighttime confusion, the nurse should place the client's mattress on the floor. So I guess that's something that we do. According to ATI, it shows your peer comparison, how many got it wrong, how many got it right, and of course that is one hard freaking question. And then when you get ready for a new one, you just hit new custom quiz by keyword. Um, for instance, urinary elimination, type urinary elimination in there. And when all those questions come up, create a new quiz and um, go about it that way. And I can assure you, if you keep studying these and you do this, uh, you will pass every exam. Um, there's no doubt about it. But stick with ATI, read the rationales, and take notes on why ATI thinks that the question is correct and why they think it is wrong. This system is your key to passing all exams and graduating nursing school. So good luck, everybody, um, and I hope this helped. Thanks.